sort of things. And then according to him, he realized that humans are selfish and self-centered. And as long as, and as long as we are selfish, that means that we can breach the contract, which the contract is that we humans would have to give up some rights so that we will be restricted to perform certain duties. And so for him, we have to, and that is there must be a third party, which is government or a monarch, so that that monarch would have a yield power to check humans or um, individuals who would be tempted to abuse what they've um, actually okay. um, been organized to do or something of that sort. Thank you, my brother. Let me listen to Doris Boateng. Doris, go ahead. Doc, um, according to Hobbes, the state of nature was unpleasant. And to him, it was a state of war. And so for people, um, and because there was absence of political order and law, people were having the right to do whatever that they, they want. There was unlimited natural freedoms, including the right to do everything, to do all things. So let's speak in the for example. Term, okay, for the everyday terms instead of the past tense. Okay, that is all I want to chip in. So let's say that uh, the state of nature describes what human beings naturally are and not necessarily a historical something like people were some way then because as soon as you say that works you where did it okay was it in africa or asia or something before the people evolved into a uh, unorganized society etc okay. okay so speak in the everyday term but continue thank you okay okay and so according to um hobbes the absence of a political order and law will mean that everybody has the um, unlimited natural freedom to do everything, the right to do anything that we all want to do. For example, the right to kill, to rape, or to steal. And so to avoid all these things, men came, um, men, men came together to contract and with everybody coming together to establish a political community. And I also put it in there like this, a civil society where a social contract will come in. And here they will all gain security in return for giving out or um, giving up their will or their right to an absolute sovereign. That is one man to lead them. And so according to, um, and when you read it, you can see that hope get, um, plays much value on the government because if you people have agreed to give your right or to give up all your, your rights to one person, then you should allow that person or that authority to do whatever that he or she thinks is right. And so much value was placed on the authority um, according to Hobbes. Yeah, so that's my submission. It's a beautiful one, well done. Insofar as that absolute authority would ensure that there is security, there is peace, Hobbes argues that he must wield uninterrupted power. Well done. Well done, Doris. That's a good thing. Let's hear um, uh, Ebenezer too. So, so far, three submissions all beautifully done. Go ahead, please, Ebenezer. All right, madam. Um, so on, on the state, state of nature, according to Hobbes, he believes um, that um, men or people are People have all. Um, he believes that people are morally have people have um, are morally corrupt. Yes, people are morally corrupt, and as such, it will be um, necessary for a third party to be established to regulate the activities of man. I'm listening now, Vineja. You're organizing the, the next level, eh? Yes, madam. And so with, with regards to um, 
Aici, mai aici nu. Madam, let me reorganize and come back. No problem. But it's a good presentation so far. Okay. Can I have one or two other reactions? Because I, this is a seminar text. So if you Google uh, Thomas Hobbes on the social contract, you would get it. If you did some work, like I prompted that you do, then everyone will have something to say. So I want to call, um, and I, I'm going to reward participation like you know, you know already. So let's get, uh, please use your official name so I can, I can keep records for you. I see Ganza. Ganza, go ahead. Okay, Doc. Yes, sir. Um, one thing that I, I read and I picked from from submission was that someone might ask if the government, we are yielding our power to the government, then who is controlling the government? But according to Hobbes, the government is controlled by the, nature, the natural laws. So they are making laws for us, but one or the other, they are also guided by the natural laws, which in turn will make them do the right thing for us all. So one thing I also, I also understood was that we are supposed not to like question the laws of the government since we are yielding our powers to them, since we are yielding our liberty and our right to them, because it's an agreement, it's a contract. That's one thing that I also learned. Great, okay. well done. Let me hear you. Now we can take a Locke's perspective also, so that we reconcile the two. So it is Hobbes and Locke now on the social contract. What do they mean when they say we are in a social contract of a kind? And how different is Hobbes' uh, notion of social contract from that of John Locke? I have heard Ebenezer Danso, I've heard Ebenezer Parker, I heard the lady, uh, if I go down there, I'll see it. And I've just heard Ganza, let me hear Gabriel Amon. Oh, there's a hand up, sorry. Let's, let's take that hand. There's Priscilla, use your full name because I may see another Priscilla, then I wouldn't know. Go ahead, Priscilla. Oh, Madam, for me, when... We can't hear you. I think you have it. Your network is not helping. <laughs> When I your network is not good, it's I not helping. Yeah. Oh, no, 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 I can't hear you. The contract you're reaching around the time of the okay. So Prisla, your 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 listening is not too clear. So I want us to so let, let us proceed. Let us proceed, okay? Uh -huh. Then when I or something, I cannot hear you. I can't hear any of what you are saying. Okay, so let's proceed. <laughs> Please change your name. I don't like NAF. What is NAF? Uh, National Association of Education. Please put your full name there. What is NAF? Mm, please put your full name there or exit. You are allowed to exit if you don't want to. Okay. Aha, uh -huh, there was Doris Osab Watting. I see Doris Osab Watting and Hawa Mohammed. <laughs> you are both there. I hear you. Okay, so let's go to the slides quickly. You see, that I have not touched on Rousseau because I'm asking you to read closely on what he meant by the general will. And by now, you should have an advantage of a kind. You would have seen the slides that I circulated. And you should be able to put some content to the general. So what did you see in the content on Rousseau's general will? What he calls the general will? Any one of you, please. Nobody saw that one. How, okay, what would you say to the proposal made by Hobbes and Locke as a response to the 
state of nature. Do you understand my question? The two people make a prescription. They prescribe what they think will help to organize society. They, they prescribe a contract. They think that there is something that we can do so that our society will be better organized. And it is based on their diagnosis of what the, what the problem is with human society prior to organized political society. My question to you is, what do you think informs the solution given by the two of them? Why is it that their solutions are not the same? That's what I'm trying to ask. What does Hobbes find wrong with living outside of organized society? That's, that's the question. People, if you are not willing to engage, we will end the session. Off. We had a great time last um, last time with main campus last Monday, and you can equally do same. I want us to we, we we've taken off nicely. Let's react. I want to know what what Hobbes thinks is the problem with living outside of an organized society. He thinks that if there is no society, political society, organized society, what will go wrong? That's what I'm interested in. Maybe Neza, go ahead. Um, I think he believes that there will be chaos. Why? Just chaos? That's true, uh, that is it just chaos? Because he thinks that um, um, naturally, people um, are morally corrupt, and hence they will be they will be brutal. Uh, yes. Thank you, Ebenezer. Let me take Ebenezer Danso again. Then we we'll come to Gabriel Amo. Next. Yes, please, Doc. So um, I believe that what um, was um, concerned about is how humans are selfish and self-centered. And then if humans are selfish and self-centered, then that means that there would be obviously someone would breach the contract that we've all decided to um, do that is um self preservance that is what um i think the third law says okay that's good is it only selfish i mean selfishness or self-centeredness that we found to be wrong with people what, what in one word what will you say uh helps i'm asking the class now what would you say helps things is the problem outside of organized society. You see, the state of nature, naturally what we are, that's what he means. What we are naturally, our state naturally, is not something that we should be proud of, according to Hobbes. And that is why we have to contract socially. We have to agree to come together. So the social contract theory of Hobbes suggest that there is something wrong with our state of nature, with us, how we are naturally, the state we are in naturally you know, has a problem. There's something wrong with it. What is that problem? So you mentioned we are self-centered. We are, we are all uh, uh, selfish. So, so what? You understand, so I want I want it to come from you. I'm just leading you on so that you see it. Okay, yeah, Doris, go ahead. Oh, it, there was Gabriel first. Gabriel, it, did your points go away? 
If your point Madam, is please, I want to say this. speak first, then Doris can come back in. Very good. Go ahead. I, actually, I, I also wanted to speak about all classifying one being as not truly being selfish. Everything I wanted to say. Hey, Gabriel, I didn't hear you. <laughs> I also wanted to say about the selfish nature of human rights. Selfish. As described by us. Okay. You. Thank you. Let me hear Doris now. Doris, go ahead. Then after we can take Aisha last one. Doctor, please. Um, I also believe that it could be from the fact that people were always living in um, a condition of permanent fear. As I already Very said. Good. I was looking for that. that. that okay. I was looking for please, that. that fear. Okay. okay. So everyone is right. I mean, our discussion so far is right. But I will let you continue, Doris. I'm building on it. The, the real issue is fear. According to Hobbes, we, we, will be, we are insecured in a state of nature. When we, when we are operating as we are naturally, we will be in the state. When we operate as we are outside of human society, will be in a constant state of fear. What are we afraid of? Continue, Doris. Um, as I said earlier, according to Thomas, the absence of a political, that, the absence of a political order means that we all have unlimited rights. That is, we, we had the right to do everything. No one was limited. And so it could mean that I have the right to kill Hawa if I want to. And if I think that someone is doing something against me, I had the right to you know, do something to prevent the person from harming me. And so people were always- Even if, just to interrupt you one minute, even if no one did anything to harm me, without law, when there's no organization, there will be survival of the fittest. Even if you haven't done anything to me, I can just look at your face and say, I don't like your face. And I can accost you for that. So the strong person will, will use his strength against the other person. Whilst the weak person may not be strong physically, but may be witty, smart, like Kukwana's, and can outsmart you. Like the way I told them at main camp, like the way someone may sit by their machine somewhere in a corner somewhere. Some tiny little brother in his boxer shirt can cause great men and women to bring their monies into an account somewhere. It is wit. So he, he or she might not be strong physically, but can also use his wit to outsmart others. Out of our self-centeredness, which our friends have mentioned beautifully in this discussion, everything I'm elaborating on came from you, the class. And that is, that is how it should be. And it's beautiful that way. So being self-centered and always looking for what brings us our glory. What brings us glory and what is about us. If you read the reference I've given you, you see that we talk. he talks about people never wanting to praise others. Even if they praise others, they, they will say it and ultimately give themselves an inch above that person and say that like if i said that oh this my friend is really good he can drive far oh is this this as if i'm praising the person before i end i'll say oh i'm even the one who taught him it will always come back to myself he mentions that in the text the reference i've given you know so we are self-centered we seek vain glory we it is always about us this is Hobbes' diagnosis of what the human situation is it's not a past sense something it's not saying that it happened sometime. No, he's saying that what we are naturally, our state naturally, if there wasn't an organized setting, where if there wasn't order, political order, polit political from the word police, an organization of society, if it wasn't there, then people would have behaved in a self-centered manner. And you can't just say that the strong will who only out, uh, uh, overpower the weak, but the weak can also outsmart the strong. And therefore there will not be any desire to, to, to create anything 
who is going to even farm? I was telling who is going to farm for a strong man to come and collect it after all the hard work? Who will give their daughter out to a man to go and marry? How can there be contract? Who will pay money for which land? You see, there can't be industry, there can't be pro production. Everything will run to a halt in such a situation where anyone can, like you said, rightly said, Doris said, any, anything can pass. There will not be right and wrong, good, bad, just and unjust. It won't make sense outside of a socially organized society. And so we will be, we will be living in continual fear. Keep some of the points down, okay? Continual fear and the state of war of all against all. You should write that down. We will always be in a potential state of war. Why? When I say potential, it means we are not actually fighting, but we are always, I told your friends on campus, you see a sister, another sister is passing by their husband. He's just, he's just passing and the sister is already watching so that she doesn't come too close <laughs> because she can tell that this one has long hair and she has short hair or she, this one has short hair and she has long hair. And already potentially she feels that this person coming is a threat. I jokingly told your colleagues also that if you eat dog meat, apologies, but if you eat dog meat, then when the dog sees you, you haven't even tried to come near him, but the dog will say, <laughs> because he knows that, you know. The point is, we will then be always living in a volatile situation, says Hobbes, giving our takes naturally, giving our natural state we continually engage in potential war against each other. And therefore, we will live in a state of fear. That's where there is God. I'm afraid that you would want to hurt me or take that which is mine or out, out with me and be the, the toast of the nation, the glory that you can gain from that. You will see all of those in my slides that I gave you. Vain glory seeking self-centeredness, etc. And so the state of war of all against all will then ultimately lead to a very insecure state where life is what? How does he describe the state of nature? I say the state of nature just means what we are naturally without laws. So think of it that way. Don't think of it as a historical something. It will, it will reflect in how you are speaking. If you, if you keep saying, uh, uh, um, uh, uh, and they were not, they were not like this, and people were not doing this, and so they became this. That is that is past tense. We are speaking narration. If I ask you to show me where that state of nature, okay, you won't be able to. But Hobbes, we are doing the philosophy of it. They were interested in showing us what we are naturally. Naturally, if you are in your room, how you behave. If there were no laws. Who would have worn any dress to the lecture? People would have felt free. But as soon as we live in an organized society with rules and regulations, says Hobbes, that insecurity associated with natural state of being will be kept. So describe to me in those five words that Hobbes uses to describe the state of nature. Anyone? Then we will we'll go back to Doris to continue. And then I saw a uh, Alassan, Aisha Alassan to continue. Okay. Anyone wants to tell us how Hobbes describes the state of nature in his five words? Keep your hand up if you want to. He uses five words. I don't want an ID, I want a name so I can call. I can see 1071 88 19. Mm. Please, okay, put your name there. You can change it. Thank you very much. You seen that? Go ahead. You seen that so well. Okay, madam. Um, he described it to be, uh, he described the state of nature to be uh, poor. Very good. Um, I, I think short, mm -hmm. brutal, and um, nasty and I think 
solitude. Yeah. yeah. Solitude. Okay. So, the other one is yeah. British. The other word I'm sorry. British. 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 Yeah. So yeah. So good. he described it to me. Yeah. Brutish, poor, short, nasty, and um solitary. solitary. Yeah. Yes. Thank let's you. Let's explain well done. That's good. Now let's explain those and then Doris can continue from where she got to. Anybody wants to explain why Hobbes will think of our natural state of being in such miserable terms? It doesn't seem to like human beings outside of the political setting. Political here meaning organized human society, that's so where there's law and order. Okay, not necessarily MPP and DC, but when, when there is organization, yes, we don't wear this to this place. You can't have what is not yours. You can't enter someone's WhatsApp platform and start posting things as if it is your space. <laughs> it's just like you can't enter someone's kitchen and then start dishing rice from his go and say, ah, but I'm hungry. You know, Adam, Adam, Nana. <laughs> yeah, I children know. Adam, if I'm hungry, I, I should be able to. It's not done that way. Even my own body, I cannot abuse it. So, so Hobbes is trying per his paper to show us that we, we need law and order, an organization where there are rules. And there's a reason why he makes a prescription. I don't want to give you all, I don't want to be the one saying everything. I want to hear it from you so that where you didn't touch on well, then I lead you there. Let's, sh let's show why Hobbes now prescribes that kind of solution he gives, that we have to give absolute authority to a sovereign, a monarch, some say, or an authority of a kind, who will ensure that the security we are looking for is given without any fear. That should tell you that the problem he identifies is fear. So he's trying to solve it by using some a fear tactic, someone who will make the people afraid to solve the problem. I have, I have even given one answer. So let's explain what is nasty. Nasty because nasty because the state of nature has if there is no law, then everybody can do what they like. Like your friends have said, life will be short. Survival of the fittest everybody starts doing what they are doing. If I can slap you and take your car from you, if you have, you have a farm and I can, you know, cut your legs off so you don't come there, I can do that. I'm just giving trivial examples now. Okay, so there is, there is, not, there is no incentive to create anything, no ingenuity, nothing. We will just be there. Subsistence farming, we can even farm in our bedroom some small corner, be one, two or three corns so that nobody comes to invade it. When I cook small, I eat finished. Because if it's so much, I dry the fish plenty outside there. The whole uh, village can come and invade it. There's no law and all that. Okay, all right. There is, do you want to add something more? Then I'll take care of Alasa, Aisha Alasa, and then we can go through our slides quickly. But I think you guys have done well. There's a hand up, okay. Go ahead. There was a hand up. Please go ahead. I, I, I was looking at another screen, so I got distracted. Please go ahead. Maxwell says, Hobbes problem is attributed to the fact that individuals lack trust among themselves and fear as well. We fear each other. So we are equal in this regard. In which regard, says Hobbes, we are all equally afraid of each other. Write it down. And so we are in a continual state of war of all men against all men. Write that also down. And since we are self-centered and selfish, vain, glory-seeking beings, since we are always seeking vain glory, we are selfish, we will do anything
We'll do anything. Those who are writing can write it quickly. We'll do anything, you know, to attain that. That leaves the state of nature potentially nasty, brutish. Solitary means lonely. You are safer alone. Imagine what happens in a coup d'etat situation when there is no order. Who, who goes around going to, to I told your friends, who will order for Uber, eh, 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 friends, eh, for a pizza? and called an Uber to go and get the pizza. Which Uber is going to get which pizza in a, in a, <laughs> in a, a, a war situation? A, what is it? a war situation or a coup d'etat situation? Who will send who? Everybody find some place to hide because you can be prey for someone who is looking for someone to destroy. And so it is just a sign to show you how volatile the situation can be and how lonely the situation can be where you can trust that your rights can be preserved. You have the rights, no one can take them from you, but you cannot enjoy those rights if there is insecurity. This is Hobbes' strongest argument. He tells us, don't come and play holy, holy with me. The real human beings, naturally, that's his point, that's state of nature, our state, naturally is that we are selfish. And so the life without order, if you don't place restrictions and regulations on human life and think that they will be led by reason. Yes, we are rational beings, says Hobbes, he agrees, but we are driven by passion, passion, seeking being glory, all those things are said. Okay, so put fear in them, let them be afraid. They will obey everything you say and there will be peace and order, which is what we lack in the state of nature. I think I gave you a good summary there. Okay. Doris, do you want to add something? If not, then we can move on. Doctor, please, no. Thank you very much. But you've done a good job, you and the team, everyone so far. My dear Aisha, please go ahead. You had some few comments you wanted to make. Aisha, please, are you there? Oh, yes, please. You are fine now. Okay. I'm okay now. Yeah. Okay, thank you. So on the screen now, you see everything that your friends have said, which I think is a good job. If you have not submitted your jam feedback, please do that because I, I want to grade it. Even if it's for just 10 marks or five marks, I want to give the feedback from you. If not for anything, it will just make you read a page or two. That's my target. So the first two references I've given you there, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> if you read that, you should be able to write something. Tell me what you are seeing in Hobbes' paper. Tell me what you see in uh, Locke. John Locke's own is softer. He doesn't think of um, the man's natural state as Hobbes will see it. He doesn't think we are that miserable. Your friends on main campus said it's not as miserable as Hobbes presented, says Locke. Locke thinks that we are led by reason. So even if there wasn't an organized society, we we'll still have a fairly okay society. But we need political order, what have you, just because we need someone to make the laws someone to interpret the laws and someone to enforce it. That's what, that's all. If not, then there's no need to even, I mean, it's not as fearful and nasty and brutish and solitary and poor as uh, Hobbes presented, says John Locke. Okay. So that is how John Locke thinks we just enter into human society to look for an, a perfect to make it better, right? Not that it was worse, that we were doing fine or we'll be doing fine so far as reason leads us to act. The thing is someone's rational thought will tell them it's okay to copy the exam and pass. That person is also led by reason. Someone will say, oh, but if you're a nice woman, my own children too, and if I've, I've read 12 children, I can impregnate two of them. There's nothing wrong with that. That's the person's reasoning. So Locke says we need someone or we need an entity. It can be one person or a collective of people who together with us make the laws, but more importantly, interpret it, 
we need someone to interpret so that people don't have their own version of what reason tells them to do. See, so an interpreter and an enforcer. And that's all the reason why we enter into that social contract to give away some rights in exchange for what we were looking for. Pops thinks, no, 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 it's not just uh, making laws and interpreting. We are really, really, really like animals in the jungle. If you, if you ex express it in those terms, we are like animals, lion that has met a goat. And when lion sees goat, he will kill it. So we are afraid because we are potentially in a death situation, state of war against all, a uh, war of all against all. All right, so the state of nature on the screen, you will learn this in other disciplines. I'm sure P-Science is doing something around it, but we are doing the philosophy of it. So we want to be careful not to do all narration. Okay, the natural condition of man without any government or pre-established authority. That's what, that's the state of nature. See what, how the man describes that it's a state of natural equality. We are naturally equal, not in strength, not in weight, but we are all afraid of each other. That is the sense of equality. Hobbes highlights, we are equally afraid of each other. I may be the strongest, we look at how the, the great people of our nations guard their homes. <laughs> hey, have you thought about it? Security man, security lock, three guns inside the room. I mean, but the person is supposed to be the richest guy. And they are so afraid. <laughs> we had only two shoes. What, what do you have to lock your door again? The door will be open at you sleep. So even the supposed rich person that can get all the guns and what have you, so it's still afraid. We are equally potentially afraid of each other. Okay, so men in the state of nature are equal, both in intelligence and blah, 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 blah. Sad that no one can reasonably assure himself that he will not be killed by another. You see what I said? Yeah. We may have some something than another person maybe strength than the other person, which than the other person, but we are all equally afraid. I said that rich madam sitting in front of the car is afraid that the house girl has something to do with the husband. And no, 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 she's afraid. <laughs> Meanwhile, the house girl is also afraid that madam will beat her up for, for, for whatever, burning the soup, because madam has money. She has something more than her. But madam is also afraid that this small girl, if you look at her shape, you know, so we are always afraid, naturally. Why? Pot we are potentially equally afraid of each other, even afraid of a violent death. You, you saw all that. Why is this thing crazy? Okay. So everybody has a right to everything, like like um, Doris and Co said. Doris said so, Ebenezer also said so. Both of the Ebenezers that spoke and the one that started everything. Everyone has a right. Everyone has the right to self-defense or self-preservation. I've said all of that. Causes of war or quarrel in the state of nature. Do you have any questions before I continue? Our friend, our friend said there's mutual distrust. I read that from Maxwell, I think, in the chat. That's important. People don't trust each other. Everybody's looking for vain glory. See, I'm highlighting them all as I speak. There's mutual distrust. If you don't trust me, myself, I don't trust you. That's, that's the feeling, according to Hobbes. And we all want to be JCR something or Africa something or Pusa something. <laughs> we are looking for glory. So much so that we are posting everywhere and, and finding all the bad story you can get from the other person, just so that we will be on top. It is a desire for that. Hobbes says we are like that, naturally. That is the natural state of man, human being. That's the state of nature. Okay, not some place be that existed somewhere. And so this competition, competitive nature, I think you should put that down also. Not just self-centered, but we are potentially in competition with one another for glory. You see how brothers will go and lift metals. They will lift and lift and lift and lift just so that they will get six packs to show that tiny sister has been crossing that. They, they, they than the other person. Meanwhile, when they finish to drop, I'm just showing you how practical it from the high level there to the low level, the vain glory. All this causes war in the state of nature. And here again, when you see war, don't think that they necessarily mean 
people take guns and start shooting. It's talking about a sense of uh, not actual war, but the potential. So I've told you how sisters can, can feel that they are being threatened by someone else over their guy. So to speak, the sister will cut the hair short. The next time she'll make it long, she'll bleach a little. The next time she'll darken it. Hey, I did have some crying yeah. Because she she has to be in 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 what's the expression? She has to win the state. How things are now, if she jokes, she will be outdated. So she has to constantly, so to speak, seek to be in competition and not out of the competition. These three causes make the state of nature a state of war of all against all. I've said that. And I said that is a potential, it's not an actuality. Now, that will mean we will not look on the screen, please. I keep highlighting, we will not. There's no incentive to set up Melcom or, or which factories are big or is YouTube, what? A KFC. Who is going to set up, set up KFC for who to come and bully them out of it and collect it from them? Who, excuse me, there is no industry because the fruit thereof is uncertain. I hope you, you are getting the point. Consequently, no culture of the earth. Who farm? No commodities, no sea. We will go to sea and get fish. All these things will, will, will grind to a halt because of the natural state of man. There will be continual fear and danger. There's a hand up. Just a minute. There will be continual fear and danger of violent death, not just death, but a violent one. And the life of man will be solitary, poor, nasty, brutish, and short. There will be nothing like justice or injustice because where there is no law, there is no sin. Even if it's done, so please ask your question. Your hand is up. We are done. Go ahead, say. Yes, please, Doc. And um, please, I was asking that um, what Thomas means by food, food thereof. Which food is he talking about, please? Oh, it's an expression. He says that there will be no incentive for industry because one cannot be setting of the fruit thereof. What will come out of it? You see, it's just an explanation to what I have said that you wouldn't, industry means, you know, if like a productivity, there, there will not be any reason for you to go and produce anything because when you finish farming, like the Benjamin, the Benjaminites were suffering in the hands of the Philistines. As soon as you finish doing all the hard work and harvest, and you're about to enjoy your crop, then the Philistines will come and collect everything, and you'll be there left with nothing. If I, I farm 10 acres of land, then there is no order. So the, those who are strong, say the neighboring city folks there, come a strong guy with the giant friends come and then they just take everything that we have because they are strong they can beat us next year i won't farm if i farm at all i'll do it in my bedroom with some small four gallons and i'll gather sand inside let me show you and farm i'll have three cones <laughs> in my bedroom my bedroom they will come and take it maybe so there's no incentive for you to industrialize, that's the point. Because you cannot be certain of the fruit thereof. You cannot be certain of the outcome of that heavy hard work that you, that's what the expression is. I hope you're okay. Are you okay, sir? Vineza. Vineza, are you okay with it? I just hope Vineza didn't log out. Or didn't sleep. Okay. So on the screen now is loss of nature. What propels man to leave the state of nature? Hmm? What will make you leave? Or what will make you give up a, a society or a contest where there is no political organization? You will not want it. Why? He says, watch, being self-centered or selfish, apart from that, Fox argues that man is also rational. You still have rationality. You will see that there is, it is wiser 
to give away some of the absolute rights that we all have so that it will be restricted. We will all agree that I know you are strong, but you can't come into my compound without my permission. I know you know how to you know, share content, but you will respect my space. You respect my office. You can't say that you know how to shout. So you go and stand in someone's compound and you are shouting, you see? So that way we can all give away something and still enjoy what our, 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 like if I want to shout, I can shout, but then I will know that, oh, I can go to the field and go and shout. So the shouting will be done, but it will be restricted to a space that will not infringe on other people's rights. That's the whole point. So the law of nature is a general rule discovered by reason and can be discovered by all. The law of nature forbids man to do anything that is self-destructive and affirms self-preservation. Okay. We will leave the natural state of man and prefer an organized society so that we can look on the screen now, overcome the fear of violent death and escape that contest. To, to embrace what? Peace. I will ask you what the diagnosis of the state of nature is, according to Hobbes, and which inspires the kind of prescription he gives. You see, you diagnose the problem and you find that, oh, it is malaria that the patient had. That is why he gave atesinate amodafin or atamita lumifantri. If the diagnosis showed that the, the sickness was pregnancy, you can't cure pregnancy with a, a atamita lumifant, you see? So based on what his diagnosis of the problem is, I'm talking about herbs first, he makes a prescription of what will solve it. So you cannot look at his prescription detached from what he found to be wrong or what he found to be the the problem of the state of nature. And the same goes for law. So look at the law, uh, the, the prescription that is stipulated. I would agree to give up those specific rights that threaten each of us. So long as, that's what I added to my lady's own, I think it was Doris. So long as everyone is willing to do same. If everyone is willing to do same, then we can all put it down. Uh, we cannot put those rights down. What we can put down is the right to defend ourselves. That one we cannot. Okay, I pause for a minute. And so, <clears throat> excuse me. We must mutually give up certain rights, the right to kill, steal, lie, or assault others for the sake of self-preservation. I want to preserve myself. But even when you, I, you, you are caught red-handed, stealing for me, I have given up my right to kill you. I have given up my right to steal from you. I have a right to eat. So if I'm hungry, I would have felt okay in a stateless context hmm, to come and take that which you have so I can eat. I have to eat to preserve myself. But in a, an organized society, if we all want to preserve ourselves, then the brother too will say, I have a right to fulfill my emotional desires, like sexual ones. So the sister is passing by, look at this, he thinks this is apple. <laughs> they will also eat. Then the one who likes uh, food will also take your food. And so there will be chaos. So then let's all agree to give away these rights in exchange for a preservation of what we already have. Okay, so it's a give and take kind of something. And that, that should, should work for everyone. So that's how come Hobbes proposes so that social con contract. Any question? So such a contract will inevitably be broken unless it is enforced or unless a mechanism is put in place to keep money in check. Why? Why should, should there be a mechanism to put man in check? Take note, the mechanism is supposed to put man in check. When you look at Locke, 
It is not so much to put man in check per se, but only to explain what the law is, interpret it, and then when we have to, for instance, punish you, we, will, we should be able to get a commensurate punishment to the crime. So look at how they are all prescribing the kind of contract we should have. I'm not going to put me in any check as if I, I don't have a reason. But what reason tells me may differ from what reason is telling you. And so we need someone to interpret the law and then enforce it. That's what Locke is saying. Cops thinks, no, 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 we are self-centered. Look at it. So don't give them any chance. You need a high-handed authority, so to speak, to put them in check. Okay. If you've got cops, then the rest will only play up from heads because hops is the center of you know the social and political theories. Then the others were reacting to it, and it comes all the way to uh, Taylor's atomism and the personalism that we we'll discuss. I need someone to read what we have on the screen, please. Keep your hand up and you can read for us. Anybody, please, thank you. So we have two hands. Let's take a, oh, I can't mention your name. Uh, there are two hands. It's not Dory, so the other person. Please go ahead. Oh, it's Taufik. Taufik, go ahead. Consequently, a third party is elected to rule over us to enforce the contract. Take note. This is enforce the Enforce the contract. To enforce the contract, okay. This is the beginning of government, the sovereign, the sovereign. Very good. Very good. So let me quickly say it here that the sovereign need not be a human person, maybe a monarch, yes, but it could also be the, the state. The state could be the sovereign that uh, uh, Hobbes has in mind. Go ahead, sir. So basically, in order to ensure men do not return to the states of nature, they had to commit to two kinds of agreement. Which are one, an agreement to unite together by mutually giving up those rights that threaten each of us. Very good. So certain rights threaten each other. Threaten your rights, Bimu, can threaten me and mine. Some rights I have can threaten. So we, we give them up to custody. Go ahead, sir. An agreement to transfer our rights and freedom to an authority and pledge to obey the authority. And pledge to obey the authority. Let's look at who the sovereign is in Hobbesian terms. Go ahead, sir. Hobbes argues that given the nature of man, the ideal form of sovereign to prevent men from going back to a state of nature and to live in peace is a monarchy. Monarchy. Okay. For him, a government. Sir, sorry. For him, a government without force or sword will have no have strength to, to seek him. Everyone, take note of that. This is cops, and I, I said, when you just go and read his um, proposition or his prescription to solve the problem, you will misread him. But if you see what he thinks is the sickness. Then you will understand why he's proposing this kind of solution to the human problem of the state of nature. So please read the second point again. Okay. For him, a government without force or sword will have no strength to secure the life and property of man. Hence, the monarch must be given absolute authority you have to, to instill that. a great deal. Absolute authority. To instill what a great deal of what <laughs> fear through punishment yeah. to those who who might consider violating the social contract. Yeah, there are so so you can have. I could use several scenarios to show you this. You can have government, as in political government, that have this question. Think of what one would call the communist setting. If you joke, even the paste you use this morning, you have to come and line up and take it at the Ministry for Brushing of Teeth. Everybody's holding their peace. Yes, they can do that. If you come to an academic setting, you can have folks that 
have this posture, you know, Leviathan kind of posture. I said the exam will start at five to 10. If you get there uh, uh, three minutes to 10, you will not write. You know, it's, it's straight. So people will be afraid because of how the person perhaps diagnoses the problem. There are fathers at home, some fathers, they think that being a father means when the, your children hear your voice, everybody should go and hide under a table. It is a Hobbesian thing, so to disrupt, but you'll be amazed that you can have a child holding the Bible reading, and inside the Bible is a pornography. So fear doesn't always pay. And so you should be able to critique when you are diagnosing and all the diagnosis aims to do is to make the people feel afraid so they will obey. From politics to religion, to social studies, to family, whatever, look at the problem and how we are dealing with it. Perhaps we may be obscene than we thought we are. So I finish the last point. Which is a biblical monster that needs great power. Excellent. Well done. So back to our question that we started with. Does the government have legitimacy? Well, for Hobbes, yes. Insofar as we have consented, see, consent, we have agreed to let go some of the rights that we have so that we can enjoy certain benefits then the government that has received or wields that authority now must be allowed to protect us and secure our rights to preservation so that our lives will not be nasty, brutish, solitary, poor, and <clears throat> all the five points you use there, our lives will not be like that. So we have consented, so we must obey the contract. Thus, we have a duty, I'm reading the last point now, to uphold our end of the contract because we have consented to doing so. This is the basis of government authority. In not more than a page outline, if I say outline, that, that's one of the cheapest questions anyone can give. Outline Hobbes's or the Hobbesian view of what? The basis of political authority. You should be able to outline. Outline means state it. In, even in a sketchy manner. But I could also say critically assess the Hobbesian prescription at what for the human condition with the lenses of what law. I could do that. I could say watch and critique Hobbes as if you were law. And I could specify a specific uh, uh, issue that you should critique with Hobbes and so on and so forth. So those are possible things you may be asked to do. Let's read the conclusion and then we have done luck really, but we'll, we'll walk through quickly and then we will be done. Please go ahead. Conclusion. Subjects, oh, yes. subjects oh, have no right against the sovereign. Did you hear that? <laughs> Something is wrong with Hobbes. When I read this answer, I laugh. Of course, people have done some renditions of him to try and improve the paper, but the original text, is not in contention at all. That subjects have no right against the sovereign. You should know why he's saying that. He doesn't want the subject to come and interrogate the sovereign and how uh, its operations are. And some, I'm a lecturer, so let me use myself. Elect, some lecturers have that posture. You are a student, got my friend. I've, I've given the, the thing. This is the closing the period, you know, that kind of thing because they don't want you to be open to discussion. You don't discuss with them. Some, some HODs are like that. Some banking managers are like that, bank managers. They're like that. They don't know. We are trying to tell them that I think this strategy, this marketing strategy that we want to adapt doesn't uh, Look, I am the manager here, period. <laughs> As a, uh, anyway, go ahead, say. Subjects have no right against the sovereign because the sovereign is the absolute head the Olivetian who wields absolute authority. And subjects have an obligation as per the contracts to obey in all situations. 
Very good. Yeah. Please go on. Say. However, if the sovereign becomes weak or is no longer able to protect the subject, take note. The Commonwealth. Everybody take note. However, yeah. Mm -hmm. If the sovereign becomes weak or is no longer able to, to protect the subject, the Commonwealth has collapsed. The common world has collapsed and the subjects are no longer bound by contracts to the sovereign. You see that? So a weak sovereign, a weak sovereign, and I'm saying that the sovereign need not necessarily be a human being. You see, it can be a weak political. That's why sometimes who's coming, who did that? The person, where the, the, the sovereign is a human being, Friday, the person is so old, or I don't know, maybe not old, but has become so soft. It can protect the people. There's insecurity. If that happens, according to Hobbes, the Commonwealth has collapsed. So there is nobody, because I put my rights down that I won't protect myself so that you will protect him. Remember, his own is for security protection. Security from who? From each other. Oh, yes, royal. We are afraid of each other. So we put our you know, rights down for you to take care of. You, our chosen sovereign, take care of it. As soon as we make you the sovereign, you are outside of the church. We don't hold any, you don't have any conditional relation with us. Yours is absolute so that you can protect us well. Then you become weak. If you become weak, the commonwealth has dissolved. It says, uh, uh, hops. We will not come and JJ also and do, oh, oh, we have to make sure if there's insecurity, if I'm not secured, I have to take my gun. When you pass by my house, pew, because I passed on that right so I can sleep peacefully and expect that if it is the military or the police or uh, whatever uh, uh, area, uh, <laughs> police or whatever, they will take care of me so I will sleep. So money that I've worked hard for to, to spend, and they take 1,800, 7,700 and whatever as tax to go and pay for the security of this. So if I feel insecure, I will not. This is Hobbes. So I'm showing you the Hobbesian view. A weak commonwealth has collapsed, and the subjects are no longer bound by the by the contract. John Locke. Locke says everything that our friend is saying, except that he doesn't paint that kind of picture. Thank you, uh, Taufik. Taufik, uh, Mohammed, thank you. Is it my friend? It's it's Taufik. Uh, is it my friend? <laughs> yeah. Yo, okay. I hear you. Hopefully. Yo, thank you very much. You're welcome, madam. Back. You. Okay. Is, your, your hand is up. Is there a question? Or you wanted to? I have a question. Go ahead. Go ahead. Can you please go back to the previous slide? The previous slide. Okay. Yes, I'm there. Okay. Is it this one? So, um, from what Hope said, then. Yes, please. According to Hope. Subjects have an obligation as per the contract to obey in all situations. Then my question is, do we have the right to appeal after a court ruling? If it is part of the system, you see, I've told, I said that the absolute or the, the monarch or, well, the Leviathan cannot necessarily always mean one human person. It can be the system, the state or Ghana. So Ghana, has indicted the University of Ghana says, we don't want to work with you again. Where is the University of Ghana? Which human beings go University of Ghana? You see, if you go, you will see vice chancellors and pro vice chancellors and what have you. But they'll say the University of Ghana says, because we want to deal with a corporate entity called University of Ghana. The same way we can have the state versus ATA, whatever. I don't want to mention anybody, but the state versus. Opinion, 
or Pinata or whatever, who raped the, the daughter. The daughter said, Oh, yes, it's my father. You please help me now, forgive him. He said, Go, 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 find your way. You're forgiving him, but this one is not about you and your father. It is about the state, the commonwealth, the collective us. You have hurt us as a collective. That's why, even if you yourself, God forbid, you try to take your own life and you don't succeed, the state will come and hold you responsible for trying to hurt the collective us. That takes us close to a uh, resource general. So back here, the point is, the point is, please, 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 please. The point is, we have no, we have no, what was your point, Kav? I, I missed it a bit. The obligation is always towards us and our preservation. The state doesn't owe us anything done to protect us. Doris, I don't know if I clarified that concern you had. I got a little distracted. Um, doctor, um, yes. but what Bob is saying, he said yeah. that we have an obligation as per the contract to obey in all situations. And I was thinking that then if I go to court and there is a ruling, does it mean that I have no right to appeal because he says that we should obey in all situations? So my answer was appealing to appeal, appeal to court is part of the system made available by the state, you see that? It's, so you, when you appeal, you are still obeying the state. It's part of the mechanism of the collective state. So, so the state allows, our laws allow you to appeal. The law even allows, allows you to go beyond the appeal court to the Supreme Court. It's all part of the setup to protect you. The state is there to protect you. So you, when we say obey, it doesn't mean that don't, don't ask for a, a redress, don't, don't go to appeal, don't go to Supreme Court. No, even in Ghana as a state where we, we say obey the state, it is the very state that allows you to demonstrate, the very state that allows you to go to court with your consent, the very state that allows you to appeal when you think you're not happy with it, to go to the Supreme to elect who you want. So it is still part of the state's mechanism. So you, you have to, when you go to a court and the, the, you are given a sentence and you don't feel that the laws were properly interpreted, you are allowed to go ahead and appeal. And that's not a disobedience to the state. You are still doing what the state says you should do, which is what? Appeal when you are not happy with it. That's what I was trying to say. So it is the collective state. We will have a challenge though, where we have a monarchy, where the power is in a, a, a human person's hand, one person. You see, not a system, but a person. I don't know if that clarifies it. Yes, please. Okay. okay. All right. So we can quickly look at lock. I've already said it. I'll just walk you through quickly. The legitimacy of government, justification for the dissolution of government. Those would be the few who add. It, he thinks that's the state of nature. Naturally, it is a state of perfect freedom. That's what Locke thinks. Mm -hmm. Equality again comes there, and he appeals to our our, our uh, a very basic principle. There's a reason why Locke had to run away eh? <laughs> because he spoke against the monarchy. Then he thought, Ah, what is this thing that you people want to come and scare us with? That some people were born to be kings forever. We were all born the same. No one is subordinate or subject to another. No one has dominion over another's being either to enslave him or make him his servant because all men are created equal, highlighted. Says, says Locke, he was reacting then to the monarchy, the monarchy. And so you can see that this man already is giving us inklings towards what, what we, we now call a democracy of a kind. Okay. A state of liberty, see, so he started by saying we were in a state of perfect freedom, naturally without an organized society, we are in a state of perfect freedom. But then we qualify it quickly. He qualifies it. It's a state of liberty, not a state of license. So we can freely do things, but we are regulated by what? Reason. That is it here, this one, the law of nature, which is what? Reason. So it's a state of liberty. Liberty means restricted freedom. It is not a state of license, like we do whatever we like. 
No. Lock things. No, no, no. We are too human to behave like animals. Human beings, even if no one is watching, even if there are no rules, we are rational human beings. <laughs> we are rational, as you say. So we are regulated prior to human organization, law or regulation of any kind. We will let we let what reason lead us. You see that this man painted a more glorious picture of what the human condition is than what Hobbes does. It's up to you to make a decision on who is being sincere. Oh, oh. These children can disturb. Ah. <laughs> the law of nature is discovered through reason. Okay. So we will know, according to law, we will know what should be done and what shouldn't be done when we apply reason. So it, it is not a state of liberty, excuse me, it's not a state of license, even though it's a state of liberty. I could state that and actually to explain and show how his view counters that of Hobbes. According to Locke, the state of nature may not be all glorious, but it is not as miserable as John Locke presented. Give an account of that. Uh, give an account is a cheap question. Then critically review or critically assess or give a response philosophically to that view. You should be able to do that. Straightforward. Any questions, please? We are almost done. Then you can go and do your general work. Any question, please? Okay. I just hope that most of you have done your reading so that I will not have to talk plenty. Okay, so you, you see that, that your liberty doesn't include the liberty to destroy yourself. Reason doesn't tell you to destroy yourself or any creature who is in your possession. Let's look at some of the natural rights of man in the state of nature. We are finishing now, so get the, the key thing. Natural rights of man in the state of nature. If there wasn't an organized society, you would have the right to preserve yourself and your property against any injuries. Just like we said with Hobbes. You would judge and punish. So if I hated you for taking, for being first in class, for example, <laughs> then when you come and take my pen, okay, okay. Now, oh, can I use your pen to write? I'll get up and slap you, push you down. Why did you take my pen? Can't you buy your own? Well, you and I know that <laughs> it's not about a pen. It's about Ubiari, no defense. So if you, we are in the state of nature, we judge and punish people who breached the law. You see? Is, this is his diagnosis. And so you will see the prescription. I've already touched on that. We seek to preserve our property and we determine the punishment that should commensurate with the crime committed. And that is dangerous. See, we make the law by reason, of course, but my reason, your reason, we make it, then we Interpret it that if I'm eating, I come and take my food. You should you should stay in prison. If it's still a good, you should be arrested and put in prison for three months. But if you take my hundred thousand dollars, then that one day you should be for you should be there for thousand years. Who is measuring what? Do you know how much the good meant to me <clears throat> and what it cost me? Whilst looking for it, I left my baby, for example, God forbid, and something happened to them. Why do you think that the goal should be worth three months? Do you know its implications to me, et cetera, et cetera? So if you see the challenge there, then you see the proposal made by Locke. Natural rights in the state of nature, okay? Read it. All these are straightforward when you read you know. The proportion of punishment versus the crime committed is the issue. So what does he propose? <coughs> <clears throat> he proposes one. 
We are not sufficiently protected in the state of nature. It is not a jungle of a situation, yes, but we are not sufficiently protected. So we still need protection, but more importantly, we need an objective law, so to speak. I hope you are seeing the screen. We need a common consent to determine the standards of right and wrong. That which is common, not my prescription. You took my bowl of rice. So you should give me your three houses. No, not that. Two, look at the next point. The absence of an indifferent judge. Who will be a judge if everybody has an influence? See? So we need a neutral judge. He's now showing you why we should contract, why the social contract. Whereas corpses, why the social contract differs from this. I need you to see that. Then you will see where Muzo comes in with his general will. So determining that and the absence of power to back and support a sentence when one is right and give it due execution. So we need an executor. That's why when the judge says, court rise, boom, this person won the election, case closed. You can go for appeal. It's part of the system, like a uh, Doris Act. You can go for appeal. But when you go to appeal, and then from there you go to Supreme Court, and you still say, oh, Supreme Court, they should review. After the review, you need to. That's Ghana's system. You are done. You must obey it like that. Okay. University of Ghana has a system. When you don't like your result, you go through this. And then they, 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 they. Ultimately, there has to be some finality of a crime. Without a common superior, this is law to punish offenders and execute the laws of nature, the rights man enjoy in the state of nature, especially, there comes the natural property thing, watch. Especially the natural right to property is uncertain and exposed to constant invasion by others. This makes the state of nature unsafe and uneasy. See, but not nasty, solitary, brutish, poor, no, not that. But here, I can use my royal against you <laughs> to come and say that you ate something of mine. You took something, so you must be killed or something like that. So we need an execution. Therefore, look at the proposal by uh, Locke. Will I get someone who has the honest again to read their finishing lock? Then we can end. Anybody, just raise your hand. Okay, I see Aisha's hand. I see Mohammed. Aisha, read for me now. Thank you. Oh, there's a third hand. And there's Jemima Mamon too. Jemima, go ahead. I think Aisha is a bit in this group. Jemima, read, read for me. Okay, um, for the protection of their property, men enter into a social contract to form a body politic under one government, an authority to whom everyone in the society may appeal when offended. Did you see that? May appeal when offended. So look at a uh, log slant. Log slant is in how to adjudicate. Oh, we need someone for adjudication. First, what is the law? And then interpret it for us. I, I bought the land first. I paid first. I paid 300 Ghana. Then this is, well, I paid second, but I paid 1,000 Ghana. So you see that my property, okay, then, okay, you give him half of this and this person to give half of this. If you just say give him half of this, give this, this. I can say, no, I won't give. So then I need a third factor, someone to enforce it. That, that is the angle that law brings to the discussion on social contract. Not that some people are going to behave like animals and kill themselves, but I'm telling you there are options. And if you want to study, you know, scripture or something, look at what God told uh, Job. When I was creating my world, where were you? Master, go through the pain a little. <laughs> It, it sounds obscene, a little, I think. So you want to be careful when you're rubbishing it. Sometimes 
it looks like that is what the law says. But for law, it is for adjudication, for explanation, for enforcement of the law, for interpretation, opening it up. Go ahead, Aisha. Hey, sorry, um, my lady, go ahead. Men, yeah, men by nature are all men by nature are all free, equal, and independent, and therefore cannot be subjected to the political power of another without their own consent. Without their own consent. The only way. Just a minute. You see that here, they are own. So Locke says, if you don't leave, and we'll see that in Crito when we read uh, Socrates Crito. I think that is the third topic also after the individualism, communitarianism thing. We'll look at uh, Martin Luther Jr. and then um, Crito on civil disobedience. Should we disobey the state? Just so in case there is an unjust law, we'll look at all that. And there you see that Socrates said, I didn't leave this place, this, this state, Athens. I didn't leave Athens. For all my 70 something years, I've been here. If the laws were bad at all, they still kept me alive. I, the law protected me from the armed robber, for example. It was the law that made the traffic livestock for me to cross. It was the law that taxed some people and fed me and taxed me and fed and blah, blah, blah. So a bad law, no matter how bad it was, kept me. I didn't leave. So I consented to the law. This, is, this was Socrates' argument, why he sat down and allowed them to make him drink the hemlock to kill him when he knew that he had he was not guilty of what they claim he, he had done. The same with uh, the Jesus story, if you if you believe it. He allowed the, the so-called law, the, the erring law, the, the, the law was erring, was wrong. I allowed them to use that law to kill him so he can make it for it. Therefore, the notion of consent is important to look. We saw it also in uh, Hops, but I think it's more pronounced with lock. It is that consent is either tacit or explicit. Tacit means hidden. So you didn't leave. You, you were not there when anybody signed anything that this is how we want the country to run. But when you also came to meet it, you didn't leave. You didn't say, Me, I don't like the laws in, in this nation. I'm gone. I'm going to leave somewhere else. You have stayed here and enjoyed the benefit that the law gives. When the trouble is coming that you don't like. So take note. Locke says, if you don't leave, just like Kito, eh, eh, Socrates in the Crito, if you don't leave, then you are consenting, you are agreeing to the terms of the law. And so if you come to University of Ghana, and or oh, yeah, let me use my platform, it makes it easier. <laughs> if you enter my platform, you want to be there, you keep the rules. You can't keep the rules, or Oga make you go on. They say we invest your time. We are doing six weeks more plus. And you meet Kony, and go to the place where they do 13. That, that is the story. <laughs> I mean, okay, yeah. So if you are still here, then you have consented. Don't say, but where did I write anything? Me, did I say I want to do this course? You accepted it. You are doing it. You are consenting. That's it. All right. The second one, pick. <laughs> My sister, continue, please. Okay. The only way anyone gives up his natural liberty and puts on the bounds of civil society is by agreeing with other men to unite into a community for a comfortable, safe and peaceful living in a secure enjoyment of their property. Uh -huh. Please, should I continue? Yes, consent can be an express or a tacit one. So explicit or implicit. Express means one. you go and sign. What we do when we do marriage ceremony, if it is done properly, is to do an express consent. That's why people sign documents and they stand in front of people. If I have to give notice, at least mm -hmm. one day's notice and all that, because we want the consent to be expressed. So that some woman doesn't come later and say, she is the first wife or she's the wife or blah, blah, blah. Then when you are buying a land, they say, but sometimes people consent tacitly. What is a 16-year-old lady doing? No, no, 16 child. What is an 18-year-old lady doing in 
a, 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 a whatever. Thirty something old man's bedroom around eleven thirty. You say you came and you are paid. Hey, you, you tacitly consented. When the man was doing the doing now, you were sitting down watching. Okay, I think the point is made. So you can transfer that to a social setting for understanding. Hey, the power to do whatever he thinks fit for his own protection and the protection of others is taking away. The power to punish crime is taking away. The power to interpret the law is taken away and given to the government or the state. That is what government is. So where is the legitimacy of government? Quickly, the government is formed, listen to lockdown, to uphold and protect the natural rights of the people. The role of government is to make laws, take note, judge right from wrong, <laughs> excuse me, restrict and punish offenders or violators of the law. So long as government fulfills this purpose, the people are obliged to be a contract is binding. If you don't do that, contract is not binding. But if the people feel that the government has failed to fulfill its purpose, government is being unjust or partial or acting without their consent, express or tacit, the people have the right. This right hasn't gone. <laughs> They have the right to rebel or bring down the current, the current government and elect a new one. See, so, so that's lock advocates for a limited power of government compared to Hobbes. I could ask you to identify three main contrasting views of Locke and Hobbes' state of nature and critically respond to any one of them. And that can be a full example. You see, and it's straightforward. These are all storytelling, sort of just a little application of reasoning here and there. You can write a very good paper to that. When I got here, I told your colleagues on main campus that read Jean Jacques Rousseau, his state of nature. He says, Man is born free, but everywhere in chains. His concern is the day one person said, This property is mine, this land is mine. That is when trouble started. <laughs> Greed, competition, vanity and vice. You've seen all that. See, the one who invented private property, the thing is mine, I own it. God has created his world. Look at this big sea there. Then people tell us you can't fish beyond so and so. Why? <laughs> because this place is for Ghana. When you drive across from, say, Accra towards Central Region, you drive and see vegetation, green vegetation, plenty. You go and build a house on one, and you see the owner will come. It is mine. How did it become yours? I don't know created the world. Well, Rousseau says the day that someone owned this private property, picked something and said, this is mine, that is when trouble began. Okay. And we will transfer this on to the, the I think, the third or so discussion on, on economic system to show if I add my my, uh, uh, whatever, I apply my energy to something. If that thing is in the field, then it is for everybody. But when I go there and go and pluck that mango, come and squeeze the juice out of it, create a mango juice, put it in a container, label it, and put it in the fridge. You don't come and tell me, oh, mango, no, it's God that created the mango. So the, the mango in the fridge is for all of us. Hey, <laughs> I've added value to it has become mine. Well, Rousseau says the day that someone picked something that is naturally given to all of us and said, it is mine, that is when trouble began. I need you to read through, now I'm telling you too much. I want you to read and find stuff for you, yourself. And the reference I've given you, you should be able to do fine, okay? So his slant, Rousseau's slant is on managing our, our, private property, the notion of property. And he goes ahead to mention the general will. See that I've given slides on that, you should read it. General will differs from the will of all. You should be able to distinguish the two. What is the general will? What is the will of all? They're not the same. The general will is, a, is the full thing. Cassava plus plantain pounded has become another thing. But take, 
taken from the two and then blended to form a new whole. The will of all is individual. So there's the individual wills all brought together. It's not the same as the general. The general will is what we have collectively taken to be the case, what we collectively hold. So read further on these slides and the content and it should come out clearly for you. I ask you to distinguish the will of all from the general will. I don't have any other thing to add now. So I would want you to go and read. You will see why Rousseau wants you to be compelled to obey the general will because he thinks that is what will set you free. Look at these words. All these, you should know them offhanded you please. When you are dealing with a state, a state that, well, it's okay, I don't say much. Look at passive, actively, how do you describe it? They are all there, look on the screen. Those who are associated with the people are called blah, 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 all these are there. Related to the African setting, chieftaincy, for example, someone is far, is in far away, uh, you know, uh, maybe Iceland, but he says, hey, yeah, Santi for the, hey, or Chima, yeah, my name is, hey, we are Shantis. Hey, the person identified with the collectively held view. How Ghanaian can people be compared to being a Santi or Ghan or Tree? That's a question for you to think to. And I'm sure most of you would have seen this one already. Some two would never have seen it until it, it warms up on them. We'll do some group work. Martin Luther King and Socrates and the others. I want to wish you well, unless there's a question. Please ask if there's any question. If not, we, we did our full time. I'm even sure that we've got the energy <coughs> to get to this place. So you will read and then you will produce a response on Rousseau's notion of the general will. After you have gone through his contract theory, social contract theory, you will let it accumulate into the general will thing. Write it somewhere because I may ask you to submit it and it might just be within 30 minutes. So you won't have time to go and think through. Thank you very much. And in the absence of any question, okay, there are three hands up. Are there questions or you wanted to read them? If there are questions, then please go ahead or mute and speak, any one of you. But if not, then I think we are done for the night. Are there questions? Aisha, do you have a question, please? Okay, thank you. Uh, Taufik, do you have a question? Jemma Mamon, do you have a question? All right, if there are no questions, then I think we can call it a night. Make sure you have submitted your jam tomorrow, Friday, close of day, around 5 p.m. I'll change the link. It means no submission can come through. Okay, there are no excuses. You don't need to be on Sakai to be able to do that. That's why I took it out of Sakai. I would have done it on Sakai. The jam board is accessible to you. So it's a new feature. You just go there, you have read some content. I'm putting everything on, on platforms, WhatsApp platform, because I know people are still paying fees. So you should also take the opportunity and get work done for yourself and earn a mark. After close of day tomorrow, you can't post your response. I've seen quite a number of them. Some are, I pray that their submissions are missing. They are not missing. <laughs> they are on the other slide. I have all of them. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. Have a wonderful yeah. evening. And our next meeting will be, God willing, online again, Tuesday, 7.50 a.m. We, we should do it 8 a.m. because of the setting for the Zoom. It will be 8 to 10. We use the same link. That's why the time it didn't change. I saw someone ask that on the platform. We are using the same link. So we don't need to change the time. But we will know our meeting time. I want to wish you well. Take care and all the best.